Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by an isotope. You should then be able to describe how a mass spectrometer works. And finally you should be able to analyse a mass spectrum. In the last topic we saw how to use the atomic number and mass number to work out the numbers of protons, neutrons and electrons for atoms and for ions. Now if you look at your periodic table you'll see that the mass numbers are decimals and that's due to the presence of isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons and different masses. Now that is a key definition and you could be asked it in your exam, so you need to learn it. All of the isotopes of an element react in the same way and that's because they all have the same electron configuration. I'm showing you here two isotopes of copper. Each isotope has got 29 protons, but the number of neutrons varies. This isotope has 34 neutrons, but this isotope has 36 neutrons. Now one key idea you need to understand is abundance. The abundance tells us how common each isotope is. Around 69% of copper atoms are copper 63, and around 31% of copper atoms are copper 65. So the question is, how do we determine the mass number and abundance of isotopes? Well to do that, we use a machine called a mass spectrometer, and you could be asked that in your exam. Now if you're following the AQA specification, then you need to know the details of how the mass spectrometer works. There are several different types of mass spectrometer, but the one required for the AQA specification is called a time of flight mass spectrometer. In the first stage, we take a sample of the element that we're interested in, and we place this into the sample chamber. This sample contains all of the different isotopes of that element. The atoms then go through a process called ionization, and this converts all of the atoms into positive ions. These positive ions are now attracted to a negatively charged plate. This negative charge causes the ions to accelerate, and this increases the kinetic energy of the ions. Now the key fact that you need to learn is that all of the ions with the same charge will have the same kinetic energy. For example, all of the ions with a single positive charge will have the same kinetic energy as each other. Once the ions pass through the negative plate, they stop accelerating and they drift down the chamber towards the detector. Now the key idea you need to understand is that the ions drift down the chamber at different velocities, with the lighter ions moving faster than the heavier ions. At the end of the drift chamber, the ions reach the detector. Now each positive ion gains electrons from the detector. So for example, an ion with a single positive charge will gain a single electron. This transfer of electrons causes a current to flow. Imagine that we've got two different isotopes moving down the drift chamber. Ions of the lighter isotope will have a greater velocity and will reach a detector first. The time taken to move down the drift chamber is used by the machine to determine the mass of the isotope. And the size of the current produced when each isotope hits the detector is used to determine the abundance of each isotope. A more abundant isotope will produce a greater current than a less abundant isotope. Now one thing you need to understand is that the interior of the mass spectrometer is a vacuum, and that's to prevent the ions from colliding with molecules in the air. Coming up, we're going to look at how to interpret a mass spectrum. OK, so in this section, we're looking at how to interpret a mass spectrum. I'm showing you here the mass spectrum for the element copper. The first thing to notice is that the spectrum has got two main peaks. This tells us that copper has two main isotopes. The y-axis shows us the relative abundance for the two isotopes. This is given as a percentage of the total, and often these are shown at the top of each peak, like I'm showing you here. On the x-axis, we've got the mz ratio. This is the ratio of the mass of each ion to its charge. You don't need to worry too much about this. Almost all of the ions have a single positive charge, so we can think of the mz ratio as simply the relative mass of the ion. Here's a mass spectrum for you to interpret. This is for the element magnesium. I'd like you to work out how many magnesium isotopes are shown. Then I'd like you to work out the relative masses and abundances of each isotope. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, you can see that the spectrum has got three peaks. This tells us that magnesium has three main isotopes. The first isotope has a relative mass of 24 and an abundance of 78.9%. 
The second isotope has a relative mass of 25 and an abundance of 10.0%. And the third isotope has a relative mass of 26 and an abundance of 11.0%. Magnesium also has a range of other isotopes with very low abundances. Here's one more mass spectrum for you to interpret. This is for the element lead. Again, I'd like you to work out how many lead isotopes are shown. Then I'd like you to determine the relative masses and abundances of each isotope. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, we can see four peaks on the mass spectrum, so lead has four main isotopes. The first isotope has a relative mass of 204 and an abundance of 1.4%. The second isotope has a relative mass of 206 and an abundance of 24.1%. The third isotope has a relative mass of 207 and an abundance of 22.1%. And finally, the fourth isotope has a relative mass of 208 and an abundance of 52.4%. In the next video, we look at how to use isotope data to calculate the relative atomic mass of an element.